Yo, what's going on YouTube? This is your boy Kamarada Zero Spike back again once again and today people today we have for Kamarada Revice episode 19 and this was a very good episode a lot of portrayal in this episode too and get a lot of backstory on Hiromi and his journey throughout Phoenix and stuff like that and also some foreshadowing about Phoenix's uh, secrets and the true the true nature and things like that. Also, it's also we get introduced to um, two new characters, uh, two new characters who played a very uh, big role in Hiromi's life, especially when he was coming up in the um, coming up in the Phoenix, you know, Academy and stuff like that. It was basically his two best friends. It was a girl and a guy, and they were basically there, you know, helping, you know, basically there rising up the ranks with him and stuff like that. And we also see. We get to see like a double agent thing going on between uh, Phoenix and the and the Dead Man's Cult, and also we see we get a lot of new stuff about Hiromi. This is basically almost kind of like a, a Hiromi centric you know kind of episode, and I like it. I actually really like it. I like how we're giving Hiromi some more spotlight, getting some backstory on Hiromi, and basically learning more about Hiromi and everything and stuff like that, and also seeing his relationship between um, the former commander before he was a dead man. I don't know if this is, I don't know if this is him before he was a dead man or stuff like that, but it's not really clear, not really like seeing how to clarify it, but basically I feel like this is him. This is the real commander before the chameleon dead men took him out. So that's what I feel like. So, but yeah, basically it's, yeah, from that last episode, from that episode, yeah, it seems like he is the, uh, he is the real commander and we see why we, um, Hiromi respects him and stuff like that. Hiromi respects him so much. And I feel like, I, I feel like, you know, this is great and everything. This is a great episode, but I feel like we should have got like some of this, inform like some of this, um, backstory and information, you know, a little bit earlier, but Hey, it's here and it, it's pretty good the way they handled it as well. So we also get introduced to a new character, two new characters. Um, we get introduced to uh, Chiguya. I think that's how you pronounce her name. She was basically she's basically the double agent that is in the uh, that is in Phoenix, but also she is in the uh, Dead Man's uh, cult. Basically, figure out information and stuff like that about them. And she, we see that she is there while they're having a meeting. And um, you know, Oteka, who's basically the main villain of this series right now, talks about how we need to get. Um, Hiromi out in the open and stuff like that basically you know to turn him into a uh, basically turn him into like one of those high ranking those higher ranked uh, dead men that we've been seeing lately and we get to we basically um get to see like a lot of other things happening with um Takumi and uh, with Julio slash Takumi and Aguilera we see that Takumi does go to uh Sakura while she's at you know while she's there in her karate class and he talks to her basically telling her that you don't have to worry about me and Aguilera stuff like that I'm not sure but he basically says that I'm not your enemy anymore and I'm actually pretty okay, I'm actually okay with that with the last episode that we had you know with Takumi and everything about his past and everything like that you know I feel like it's okay for him not to be an enemy I don't know it's it's cool that he's not an enemy anymore but I don't think but also I don't think he's an ally I don't think he's an ally just yet him and Aguilera I don't think they're they're not hostile or anything like that they're not hurting people things like that so I feel like they're not gonna be like real trouble like Orteca is but he talks to uh, he talks to Sakura, and he basically tells her something. He basically tells her uh, to go try and go talk to Aguilera and things like that, trying to get her to open her eyes about you know the whole gift thing and the dead men's thing, and trying to get her to change her perspective and open her eyes to reality, and basically just go against everything she was taught, you know, growing up and things like that. And she ends up getting into a fight with Sakura, very short fight, but a very good fight. We see Sakura actually beat her, actually beat her. And it's actually pretty cool to see because uh, before Sakura was a writer, you know, she, she would fight Aguilera at Leg Ag before she would fight Aguilera. Aguilera would like completely like dominate her, and it was good to see that she finally is able to beat Aguilera. <laughs> and 
we also see that the um, Sakura's friend, you know, that the son of that weird family that's going on, he overhears a lot of the stuff that he overhears what um, Sakura is talking about with uh, Takami, and also she he also sees the fight between her and um, Aguilera. So he's around, and they're foreshadowing with this weird family of stuff that they're actually doing is, is I, I'm scared to actually know what this family is really talking about and actually really doing because this family is creepy. <laughs> I feel like they're, I hope they're not, I feel like they're aliens or something like that, which would be weird. But we also come to a, we also see that um, they'll start talking about Hiromi again and Hiromi is, he's, you know, collapsing out of nowhere. His body is not acting right. And, you know, because of the demon, because of the demon's driver that's been, you know, heavily aged him on the inside. And um, we see a lot of people who are very worried about him. And we see that uh, Chih uh, Chiguya, the new girl, who's basically, you know, the, you know, the mole for the uh, mole for Phoenix, who's infiltrating the uh, the uh, dead man's cult. She's there. They actually, we actually see her at the. Um, at the former commander's grave site and they actually go to it and we see Hiromi give put some flowers on the grave site and everything and uh Chiguya she's you know they talk to each other about you know make sure no one find and like they know she's in there and that make sure no one finds out that you are a mole for us and stuff like that you know, I'll get all the information you can and stuff and she talks about the former commander and stuff like that and, you know Hiromi doesn't feel like he's worthy of being the commander right now and uh, out, out of nowhere Another character pops up. His name, uh, 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 it starts with a T, but you know he he comes up, and that's their other friend that you know they got through the ranks with, and he's mad at uh, Hiromi for for basically saying for basically he blames Hiromi for the commander's death, and doesn't think that he deserves to be the commander or a common rider, and. Before you know, uh, Hiromi can say a lot, he collapses again, and that's when uh, Chiguya goes to the uh, goes to the you know, Iki and everybody's house, the bathhouse, and basically talks to uh, talks to her, talks to uh, Daiji, and uh, basically talks to Daiji and Iki. She calls up and she is coming there, and also it was a pretty cool scene we got to see with you know, um. I like how I'm glad how Daiji, I'm glad how Iki is very, you know, very, you know, he's very easy on, on Vice now. And he actually lets Vice try, he actually uh, lets Vice out. He lets Vice out to, make, you know, lets him out so he can try some of his mother, some of uh, Iki's mom's uh, curry. He tries to have some and she basically tells him that, no, you can't have any because I don't forgive, I haven't forgiven you about trying to eat me yet and stuff like that. So she won't have, won't let him, won't let him have any curry. And we also see the dad, the dad makes a return. He comes home and he basically feeds distraught and all this stuff. And I feel like it's going to be like a serious thing. And he just says like, oh. I have a serious like disease or whatever and he's like oh I have a cavity I'm like yo like we're not gonna talk about the whole thing about you not having a heart you know <laughs> but I feel like Phoenix probably didn't tell him uh, that he doesn't have a heart or maybe he already knows and he just doesn't want to tell the family or have them worry about him or something like that but yeah we uh, go off of that scene and we get the scene between Chikuya and the uh, and the brothers and you know, they talk to he. She talks to them about um, Hiromi and stuff like that, and telling her, telling them that you know, please make sure he doesn't push himself and stuff like that. And he, she also tells them about you know her being a double agent in the cult, in the cult, and in Phoenix and stuff like that. You know, Iki, Iki makes a mental note of that stuff like that. So we get to the we get the brothers talking to uh, Hiromi and stuff like Hiromi, and he before they get there, he opens the. Uh, he pulls out the, uh, he's in a locker. He pulls the demon's driver out of his locker and the demon's driver is like laughing. Like you see eyes on it, these purple eyes and it's laughing and stuff like that. And I'm just like, what? So I guess the demon's driver has a demon in it. Or maybe the demon's driver was meant to, I'll get, but you know what? I'm gonna keep that. I'm gonna keep that on the low. I'm gonna go, <laughs> we're gonna move on, um, but I'm gonna make a mental note of that. We're gonna come back to that later. But, um, and we also see his other his homeboy coming there and he try and he tells him to give him the uh demon's driver 
um, basically tries to take the demon driver from him. And that's when the boys come in. They talk, he talks to the brothers and they're basically, you know, he says stuff like go back to, we do, we do some flashbacks and backstory of his coming up in the, in Phoenix and stuff like that, saying how he, how he really wanted to become, he really wanted to be a hero. And we, we see that, you know, he's not, he, he was about to quit Phoenix because he just wasn't good enough. You know, he wasn't, he wasn't passing the, like the physical stuff. Like, you know, he has to spar with like other people and he was sparring with his or two friends and he kept losing. And just when he's getting ready to quit, he talks to the uh, former commander, commander gives him some nice words and stuff like that, trying to help him out. And that's basically all that motivated him. And then he started training, uh, working on his physical stuff like that. And then he was able to rise up the ranks throughout Phoenix, thanks to the former commander. And, we see that, you know, like his body is super fragile, you know, cause technically he's 80 years old and he tells them, you know, everything about that. And he's like, I can't stop fighting. Like I can't do that. And then they get word that, you know, dead maids are attacking again and they ended up going, going after him. But then, you know, Daiji, you know, you know, Iki doesn't try and stop, uh, Hiromi. And that's what Iki, that's when Daiji goes, what happened to your like normal busy bodyness? Like normally you would have tried to stop him and stuff like that. And I guess that's like Iki. There's something that Iki is trying to stop doing, I guess. Or you know, anytime we see Iki go above and beyond, you know, like you know, breaking rules and stuff like that. Whether it's you know, whether it's for his family or it's because he's trying to save whatever person has become a dead man and you know stuff like that. that's the only time we would see him go above and beyond and he didn't really do that for, he, he didn't do that for uh Hiromi this time so <clears throat> they end up getting a call and they end up going to the where you know they hear they well uh Chigia tells them that she knows what Oteka is and they go there before they get there we see uh Iki talk to uh Hiromi's other friend and he basically says like oh well Jigoryo told me that you guys used to be like tight and you know she's a mole for the occult and stuff like that and then he was like why would she tell why would she tell all of you that like ain't none of that's your business so <clears throat> after that that's when Iki starts to figure things out so they end up going to this uh end up going to the site where they think the dead men are and they get ambushed by a bunch of gift jun by a bunch of the uh gift juniors you know uh, grunts and that's when Iki figures out that maybe this is all just a distraction, and he leaves. And he tells he tells Daiji, "I'm gonna lead I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this to you." And that's when Daiji as he gets some shine as in this episode, we see him taking out all the Gibbs Juniors and stuff like, getting some real awesome like fight scenes in and stuff like that. He, he ended up using the uh, he ended up using the um, gift, the, not the gift. He ends up using the jackal of uh, Vice Stamp. It, we see his uh, jackal form, which is just a helmet change, basically. But he gets a lot of speed, and it looked really cool seeing him take out all these gift juniors at like blinding speeds. So, Hiromi, <clears throat> Hiromi ends up uh, going to a spe- ends up going to like a special, end up going to like a secluded area, and he meets up with his home, he meets up with his homeboy. But then, <clears throat> that's when Hiromi gets suspicious, and he's like, "Why would she tell me like?" We got an attack. We got. We heard about an attack with some dead men, and that's when she calls me and tells me to come here. And then you're here, so he starts to suspect that his friend is, you know, you know, trying to do something devious or whatever. And then that's when Chigia. That's when she pops. That was she pops up and she pulls out two guns on both of them. <laughs> Turns out she is a she is the traitor, and she ends up. <clears throat> you know she's the traitor, and that's when you see Orteca come in, and he you know he starts to he starts to basically take out uh, Hiromi. So we see they we see like a fight scene with Hiromi, knowing that he can't transform. All he can do is run from Orteca and basically blast him with you know the uh, the phone gun. You know he's sitting up blasting him and stuff like that, and he's getting his butt handed to him, <laughs> and. Um, He's getting his butt handed to him and stuff like that, and that's when uh, Orteca tries to cha- tries to use the gift stamp on um, his friend, and that's when Iki and Vice come in, and they ended up uh, fighting off, or basically you know fighting off fighting Orteca, and that's when 
you know, Ch uh, Chikuya, she leaves. And they ask her, why are you betraying us and stuff like that? And she says, Guys, I found out the truth about the um, about Phoenix and stuff like that. And that's why I'm like basically betraying them and betraying everybody and stuff. So they leave, you know, try to take out, try to fight off Iki. And, you know, we see that uh, Hiromi and his homeboy, they have a heart to heart talk talking about like, yeah, I wasn't. Yeah, I was mad at you and stuff, but I really just wanted to protect you, and that's and I and I needed. And that's what I tried to take. That's why I tried to get you to give me the demon stamp because I know you're gonna push yourself, and you keep doing this, you're gonna die and stuff. And they have a heart to heart talk, and it's pretty cool. You know, friendship reignited. <laughs> except except Sugar, yeah, though she is. Wow, I've, this character is gonna be around, and I feel like she is going to eventually maybe become a demon or have her own demon, something like that. Like the regular rules, not the gift stamp thing. Excuse me. And that's when Iki comes in. And Iki, you know, he does kick the he does kick the stamp out of Oteka's hand. So, but we'll also we didn't see anybody pick it up. We didn't see anybody pick it up. So, I hope that maybe Hiromi and his homeboy pick it up and take it back to the take it back to Phoenix because they were still there in the hallway before everybody left off to go fight. Everybody left off to, to go fight. So yeah, but we see that uh, they ended up. We see that we got a fight between Oteka fighting off uh, fighting off uh, Iki and Vice, and he ends up summoning. He ends up summoning one of those new demons that we've been getting lately. And he basically says, you know, earlier in the episode, he basically said that he was going to use, he was going to use his cult members to turn them into those kind of demons and stuff like that. So maybe this one is uh, a member of his cult that he had or well, member, member of his cult that, you know, chose to become a new demon. So you can buy some fighting that and, you know, with the volcano uh, form, he's able to uh, basically knock out, knock the demon out of people. You know, that's what he wants to do with uh, Takami and uh, Orteca. So, I mean, not Orteca, um, Aguilera. And yeah, so he's up <clears throat> there in the fighting him and stuff like that. And that's when uh, that's when, you know, Hiromi gets there and he's getting ready to use the uh, he's he's like, Oh, dude, don't worry, guys. I'm gonna come and say oh, I'm gonna come and help you. And I'm like, dude, you are you like you know that you're gonna die if you keep using this stamp. And also, it's talking now. It's starting to talk, and it says, "Transform, Hiromi. Let me feast on you. Let me feast on your youth, or let me feast on your body and stuff like that." And I'm just like, what? This is coming out of nowhere, you know, and I kind of figure Hiromi. Ha I kind of figure Hiromi has to have a demon. He has to have one because he he, he can only have that's it. that's the only way he's able to transform. And maybe his demon is kind of like is kind of like Kagado's with Daiji, except except you know this demon is inside of the driver instead of being inside of his body. So yeah, so episode basically ends off right there with him getting ready to transform but i feel like he like bro you don't need to transform iki and vice are handling it pretty well and you know Ortega's really not that strong i've seen from how he was in last week's episode so it doesn't like they really don't need your help and they've, they've gone through a lot together trained together and stuff so they really don't need your help they're pretty in sync with each other already and that's basically where the episode ends but and also we get uh we see that Hiromi talking to George and he's basically like what are the secrets behind the demon driver and stuff like that and then George basically tells him that you were never the that belt was never meant for you. So that's why I was saying earlier about maybe this belt was meant for a demon, you know, for a demon to use, or maybe this who whoever this other person is, like maybe like they're you know they're the ones that's meant to use supposed to use this driver and Hiromi and the reason why it rejects uh, Hiromi because he's not the true wielder of it you know he's not the true wielder of it and also we saw how uh even in the first episode when they fought the demon that came out of Hiromi like that thing I don't know I feel like that's I feel like that's the demon that's inside of his driver maybe I don't know because you need a demon in order to transform in this series. So, you know, it 
maybe that's the demon, that dragon dinosaur demon that we had, that big red one in episode one. Maybe that's him. Or I feel like it's gonna be like a I feel like it's gonna be like, gonna be like a different kind of demon. You know, like Vice and Love Co and stuff like that. So yeah, maybe this thing is gonna be like a powerful demon. I can't wait to see what it looks like. I feel like this thing is gonna be freaking menacing. Um but yeah, great episode, man. Great episode. Ten out of ten well, nine out of ten for me. It was a really good episode. The only thing I have really had to gripe about is why are you trying to fight Hiromi when you know that this this belt is killing you and now it's talking to you and saying like let me feast on you and something like that? Like I would not henchin at all. Especially in, in Hiromi's condition. He should not be transforming, but that's the whole thing about him being a hero, I guess. And we said one line that Daiji says to him is going like, Yo, you can't be a hero if you're dead. You know, you can't you can't focus on your strength if you're dead, you know, stuff like that. But we said George, man, George just got all just George got stuff going on in the background. That we don't know yet, man. I feel like I feel like I hope George isn't evil because I love this character. I still can love him a lot if he's evil or a bad guy, something like that. But at the same time, man, this is weird. And, you know, we have to see that other we have to see that, you know, that new doctor that's in there with uh the higher up dude from the government who's in there with uh george so they got something going on especially that look that they gave each other in the other episode yeah george definitely has some plans in the works or something deeper that's going on with him but other than that guys you guys let me know down in the comment section below what you guys think about this episode of camarada revice make sure to like share subscribe hit that notification bell and i'm gonna see you guys next time and remember stay henchant